Hey there, this has been an interesting question that was asked in the community group in the collective and I thought I would bring it up. How many clients can you reasonably take on? That is a question that we've been having in the coaching calls and in the community group in the collective and so I thought I would bring that discussion here to you in this YouTube video. Let's hit it. First off, are you side hustling or are you doing this full time? Because the answer to how many clients you can take on does depend on that. What are your other responsibilities that are pulling you in different directions? Okay, so I'm going to give you an example of what it's like to be working full time and to be doing it as a side hustle. If you are doing this full time, for me personally, I found I could do two federal grants at a time and like one, maybe two funding strategies that I was moving forward because that is how you're filling your pipeline with future work. And if you don't know what I'm talking about on that, I'll link a different video below about funding strategies. But for now, just think about it this way. I found that two projects, frankly, with federal forms and lots of moving parts, like that was all I could handle. And that was demanding, very demanding. Once I hired my first subcontractor, grant writer, we could do three at the same time, right? Because there was some shared, you know, she would own one grant, I would own one, and we would share the second one, right? So there, there's ways you can start expanding that. Those are federal grants that I'm giving you examples of. Those are 200 hours plus per proposal. Very demanding. What's So maybe you're doing smaller foundation grants, right? and you're, it's not taking you as long to churn out proposals. But here's the thing, that doesn't mean you then just want way more clients because of one reason alone. This is the detriment to everyone's working productivity everywhere. And it's called context switching. It is the cost to reorganize and reload into our brain everything we need to know to switch tasks from one activity to another. And if there's one thing I have been learning and really trying to hone and perfect in the last year, it is massive time blocking. Like a whole day is a deep work day on a grant proposal. Then a whole day can be your loose ends day, right? But you're not going back and forth and bouncing between things. And that's something we talk a lot about. And it's something that Alex and I internally spend a lot of time thinking about is just how do we minimize context switching so that you're not expending all of this energy and time, not actually moving your projects forward, but just bouncing around between them. So what that means is that your goal is to have enough clients that you're fairly diversified. It's not like one client, but those contract sizes per client are growing over time. So you don't, and so that you can have fewer clients, but be just as profitable or actually be more profitable, but to be just like to be making just as much money, right? With fewer clients. So that's how I want you to be thinking about that. We had a, a contract for with an organization for $45,000 a year to provide on call grant writing services. So what was cool about this is that they would bring us, Hey, here's this proposal is an opportunity we're interested in going after. It was a very large organization and can you go after it? So we'd review it, make sure that it, they were going to be competitive and all the project planning questions we have, assuming it was, then we'd say, yep, here, it's going to take us twelve, thirteen thousand dollars $13,000 to go after that. They'd approve that by email and we're away and running. What was cool about that was like repeat, you know, every year renew that contract and had that work versus having to go find a new client and having to onboard them and get to know them and do all their work, right? So there's just so much value in finding great clients and growing them, growing with them versus having a ton of clients in the whole first place. So I like, I think the sweet spot is three to five. I would love to hear what you think, what your experience is, but from my perspective, you know, that three to five is a real sweet spot and keeping in mind that two of those hopefully are funding strategy clients because they're then segueing you into grant writing work for them.
Okay, what's the other point I wanted to make? Oh, Pareto's principle. Do you remember that growing up? That is the 80-20 rule, right? The idea that 80% of your profits are coming from 20% of your clients or you know, 80% of the impact you make in the, the world comes from 20% of your actual effort and the things that you're doing, right? So we can look at it. We all have 80-20 examples all over the world and in our lives, but that really applies in, in this question of how many clients should you have. We want to have really, really good quality clients so that um, so we're not stretched thin among you know, 20 different clients, but really only two of them are actually giving us contracts of any size that you're actually making your money with and living on. So that's something to be thinking about is just who are your, that client that's giving you the most opportunity that you really should nurture and serve and expand your contract with them versus going and finding a bunch of other clients. So hope that question was helpful. It's been a really fun discussion that we've been having in coaching calls in the community group. And I thought, you know, this is a great place to bring it up and talk about it. All right, that's it. Hope that was helpful. If you liked it, hit the like and subscribe to get more videos from us. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye.